In the Maya Foundations class, we looked at how to create materials using multiple textures. In this case, uh, with this Rubik's Cube and the dice here, uh, we used a, a color texture in combination with a bump map. Now, the color map obviously gives the uh, Rubik's Cube here its uh, colors. Uh, and the bump map gives it the sense of having more modeling than there actually is. It makes these areas on the Rubik's Cube appear to um, bump out or come out, and it gives the appearance on this dice here of these little divots being um, receded in. Uh, the bump map can be quite effective. Notice how on the dice here, uh, these little divots actually catch a little bit of the uh, single spotlight in the scene here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is render, and I'm going to render using um, Maya Software Render, which is what we used throughout the Maya Foundations class. So I already have my render set, to Maya software. And if I render it out, I get this. Now, in this video, we're going to take an introductory look at the Arnold render. The Arnold render is another option that you have for rendering your scenes in Maya. And in fact, it is a more robust render in that it can uh, give us more realistic effects when it comes to uh, various properties of our materials and light. It's a more convincing realistic render than the Maya software render. It's also a more complicated render. It's a little bit more difficult to use, but we'll take a look at it in this video. So before we uh, change over to the Arnold render, let's go ahead and do one more render using the Maya software render. So I already have it set to Maya software. I'll go ahead and click on my render button. And so that we can compare this to other, um, so we can compare it to some of the Arnold renders that we're going to do, I'm going to click on this button here, which will allow us to temporarily keep that image so that we can compare it to uh, other renders that we create. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to the Arnold render. And to do that, we can click on our render settings. And with this drop down here, you'll see that we actually have, in this case, four options Maya Software, Maya Hardware, Maya Vector, and the Arnold render. When I select the Arnold render, you'll notice that we in fact get some different selections here that we didn't have with the Maya software render. Um, we'll take a look at some of these in a little bit. Let me go ahead and close this though, now that we've changed over or switched over to the Arnold render. And let's go ahead and create a render now. So once again, I'll click on my render button and we'll let it do its thing. And here it is. Here is our first Arnold render. Let's go ahead and save that image. It's not very impressive, but we can compare it to our previous one where we used Maya software and where we used the Arnold renderer. So why are we getting just a black screen here? Um, Let's take a look at uh, what's happening here. So uh, the issue with this render right now is our light in, in our scene here. We have a single spotlight, uh, but the settings for the Arnold render are very specific to get it to actually uh, work so that we can see what we're looking at in our scene. So let's go ahead and select that light and we'll make some changes to it so that we can um, get a, um, a better looking render. So the issue right now is actually the intensity of the light, which is set to one, 
what if we were to double this? And we go ahead and render it out. And we still don't really see anything. Let's try taking that number and really making it intense. Instead of just doubling it, we'll multiply it by 100 and see if that makes a difference. And while it's still dark, we're now starting to see something. So you can see that actually the numbers that we have to deal with when it comes to the intensity of our light here uh, are quite high. And we're going to take a better a look at a better way of adjusting this. So I'm going to go ahead and set the intensity back to 1 so that um, it'll be black again if we were to render this out and we'll look at another place where it would be better perhaps to set the uh, properties for this light so that we get a nice render. Let me go ahead and collapse that. We'll just collapse all of these and we'll come down here to the lights Arnold settings. Just to verify, let's go ahead and render this out one more time. You'll see, because I set the intensity back to 1, that we get just this uh, black screen here. But the number that we're going to be changing here is this one here, the exposure. So let's go ahead and crank that up. Right now it's set to 0. And I usually start with a number like 16. And that's usually my starting point when I first uh, try setting my lights for for Arnold. Um, let's see if that gives us a good result. And you can see that it looks overexposed. I'm going to go ahead and save this image though, or keep this image so that we can compare it. We've gone from Maya Software to our first render with Arnold and then our second render with Arnold. 16 is obviously too high, so I'm going to just have that and make it 8, and we'll try that. And this is looking better, however, now I think we need to find a setting that has a little more light than this. We will go ahead and keep that image. And maybe I'll just split the difference between uh, 16 and 8, and we'll try 12. Getting closer, but still perhaps a little overexposed. So I'll try 10. You can see this is a little bit of trial and error here to get the number that uh, is appropriate for what we're going for. And I think I'll settle with this number for now, 11. I might make it a little bit, oh, well, let's go ahead and do that now. We'll make it 10.5 and just see. And I think that works for me, so that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and keep that, uh, that image there and then we can compare it to uh, where we've gone from the software render switching over to Arnold and then adjusting the exposure to our light. And here is what we uh, have decided on. Remember, we're just using one single spotlight here. And while I'll probably cover some of these uh, techniques a little bit more in depth in a future video, I would like to just point out uh, a way that we can work with this light here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just check this use color temperature and you'll see that enables the temperature slider here which is set to 6500 and this is just a very convenient way of uh, changing the light to either be a warm light or a cool light. You can see that if I take the slider and just bring it a little to let's say the left I don't know if you can see, let me bring it way over to the left so it becomes a little more apparent you can see that it becomes a warmer color, and if I drag it to the right, we get these uh, cooler colors here, a more kind of uh, pale blues. Uh, let's go ahead and just shift this over a little bit and make it a little of a warmer light. Try that out. 
and you can see that that makes it uh, the, the light quality a little bit uh, warmer. Maybe I could go a little further than that. Or to contrast that, we'll go ahead and try a cooler color light. And you can see how that gives us a more uh, cool effect, something like what you might get with a um, uh, fluorescent light, for example. I think we'll go with a slightly a slightly uh, warmer look to it. And I think that for the time being, this should work well for us. Now, one thing you'll notice if we compare this image to, uh, let's say, our first image here, uh, we're not getting a bump map anymore. We don't have this bump map on our uh, material. So we need to fix that. And what I wanted to stress here is that not only are the settings for our lights uh, different using the Arnold render, but also the way that we use materials is different. So what we're going to do now is create some unique and new materials for our Arnold render. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Hypershade. And here are my two um, materials that we are using for the um, Maya software render. We have two fongs. I use the fongs because those give me a specular highlight, which I thought would work well with a Rubik's Cube and with dice. Uh, but what we want to do is create a unique material or a couple unique materials specifically for our Arnold render. So. Let me go ahead and maximize this. And what I want to point out to you here is, of course, you have lots and lots of options. Uh, this can become a little bit overwhelming. We're looking at a lot of different things here, some of which are materials, some are uh, textures. We can narrow down what we're looking at by making certain selections in here. For instance, these are the... Um, these are the materials that we can use with our uh, Maya software render, or that would be use that could be used effectively for our Maya software render. Uh, what you'll notice is that we actually have some selections down here too, specifically for Arnold. I'm going to go down to if we select Arnold again. There's going to be a lot of options here, but if we go to just shader, or even narrow it down further to surface shader. Uh, then we can narrow down what we're looking at uh, to just the selections that we're going to want. Now, the one that I'm going to pick right now, the first Arnold material that I'm going to create is going to be this one here, the standard surface. So we'll create one of those. And before we do anything to it, let's go ahead and just apply this material to uh, all the objects in my scene. And then we'll just take a look at what that looks like. So I'll just middle mouse drag it onto all three of these objects here. Maybe I'll give this a name. Uh, I'm going to call it ground because we're going to actually use this for the ground eventually. And we'll go ahead and render this out and see what this very basic shader looks like on our scene. So we'll go ahead and hit render. And here's what we get. Now, a couple of interesting things are happening here that you have to look at very carefully to notice. Uh, but you might notice that actually we're getting a very slight reflection in here of these objects. They are actually reflecting on this floor surface here. It's very subtle right now, but this is something that we would not get with the Maya software render, at least not uh, without faking it. We would have to fake this effect of uh, calculated reflection in Maya software. The Arnold render will actually uh, calculate it uh, very realistically. Let's go ahead and keep this image. And we'll go ahead and create some unique materials specifically for our Rubik's Cube and our dice now. 
So I'm going to go back to my hypershade. And once again, we'll create another material. Let's go ahead and start with the uh, dice. So we'll start with that one first. I'm going to pick another standard surface. And I think I'll go ahead and name it. We'll apply it to the dice. And we'll go ahead and apply the uh, color texture for that material. So I have my new material selected. And what we'll do is, well, before I do this, let's go ahead and just uh, explore this a little bit. I can obviously change it to any color I want, just like you can with any other uh, material typically in Maya. So you can see that we adjusted the um, color property of that material. But what we actually want to do is apply a texture to it. So I'm going to click on the checkerboard by color, go to file, click on this folder here and find my color texture. Here's what my color texture looks like and we'll go ahead and apply it. And now we have our uh, texture applied to our material for the dice. And if we render it out, here is what it looks like. So now that we have our color texture applied to our material for our dice, let's go ahead and add the bump map to it, like we had with the Maya software render. So I'm going to go back to my hypershade. I will select my uh, texture for that dice, go to the attribute editor, and we can take a look at a number of these properties. You can see that there's a lot of them. We've got our base properties, our specular, transmission, subsurface, coat. There's a lot going on here. For the bump map, what we want to do is come down here to geometry. And here you'll see that we have an option for bump mapping. And we apply this bump map in the same way that we apply a bump map to our Fongs, Blends, Lamberts, and so on that we use for the Maya software render. Uh, we simply click on this checkerboard, go to File. Uh, here we have our uh, bump value. That's the property that we actually want to assign the bump texture to. I'm going to click on this black arrow here, click on the folder, and find my uh, bump map here. Here it is. It looks very similar. Here's the original texture for the uh, color. The bump is very similar. It just has more kind of softened uh, edges around here so that um, the little divots that this will give the illusion of there being on the dice will be a little less uh, severe than they would if I used the actual color map for it. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And take a look at it in here you can notice once again we're getting that nice uh, area where the light is uh, getting caught on that little divot there let's go ahead and render this out and see how it looks and it's subtle but you can see that now it looks like we have our bump map properly um, assigned to the dice. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little uh, and see what I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, camera view in case I want to go right back to it. Uh, but let's go ahead and zoom in on this dice and just take a look at it and do a quick render of that. So here you'll notice we have our little divots in our dice. Um, there's a bit of noise here that we might want to uh, soften up. And this is very similar to in Maya software. However, I'm going to show you one other technique that might make uh, the process a little bit easier for you. And that is using something called the IPR render. So the IPR render, we can access that either here, IPR, or we can access it here uh, as well. So if I click on this, this looks very similar, this IPR render, 
Uh, the difference is that it's not really doing as much with the anti-aliasing, especially around the edges of our meshes, so it's not quite as good a quality of render. But the benefit of it is that using the IPR render, we can actually just select a small part of the image and re-render just that part. If I want to re-render this little part here, I could just select it. If I want to re-render this, just this one single divot here, I can uh, re-render that. And here's where this can be a huge time saver for you when working with materials. You can see the area I have selected here. I'm going to go to my hypershade. I will select my dice material, look at its up and downstream connections, and find the node for our bump map, which is here. You can see that the bump, here's the uh, image we're using for the bump map, feeding into the bump node here, which feeds into the normal camera uh, property of our material. I'm going to select this node here and adjust the bump depth here. Now notice as I adjust this that it'll actually update in here. So we'll just bring this down I'm going to try a number, I'll just have that and make it 0.5. It starts to look a little better. Let's bring that down even more. And you can see that we're getting a little bit better results here by fine-tuning this number here. And I think that's starting to look a lot better. Let's go ahead and re-render out more of this image. And now we've eliminated a lot of that uh, noise that seemed to be introduced by our bump map and uh, this is looking a lot nicer. And now because I bookmarked this uh, position of my camera here, if I want to return to my original position for the camera, I simply go to view bookmarks and then select the bookmark it'll pop us right back to where the camera originally was. So now that we've got our dice in our scene let's go ahead and try applying the same thing to our Rubik's Cube. Uh, maybe we'll do the order a little differently this time. This time we'll apply the bump map first and then the color map to it. So once again go to our hyper shade, create a uh, Arnold surface shader will once again stick with the uh, very basic standard surface. Rename it. And apply it to our mesh. And now make some adjustments to it. Again, we could start playing around with the color here. Looks like I didn't actually apply it. Let me go back and make sure, actually, uh, let's see, I think I just did the wrong property here, that's all. Go back up to the top. We're not going to leave it this color, but just for the sake of this demo, for now, it'll be red. We'll go back to Geometry, Bump Mapping, File, and we'll find its Bump Map. Here's what, here's what the color texture is going to look like, and here is the bump map for it. And we'll go ahead and apply that. You can see that it's having the effect on there, that we're getting the illusion that there's more um, modeling and sculpting on the object than there actually is. Now let's go ahead and apply the color map as well. Go back up to the top to the color channel. We're not going to change the color. Well, you know, at this point we can because we're going to just change it anyway to uh, to our image that we have uh, specifically for this model here. Go ahead and click on the checkerboard file. Click on the folder. Find our texture and apply it. And there we go. Now we have both color and bump map on both of our objects. Let's go ahead and render it out and see how it looks. And there it is. I'm going to go ahead and keep this image and let's go ahead and compare this to our uh, first render 
from the beginning, uh, when we started taking a look at this, uh, we'll, we'll go look at the image that we rendered it out uh, using the Maya software. So here's what it was with the Maya software render. And here it is with the Arnold render. So this video is intended just to really get you up and started using the Arnold render. Uh, it can get quite involved, it can get quite complicated, uh, but I would like to take a look at one more example before we wrap up this video. So I'm going to go ahead and import another object into my scene. And we'll apply another uh, material to it and explore these materials a little bit more in uh, using the Arnold render. So here we'll just scale this model down a little more. I think that should be good. Maybe I'll just move the, the dice over here, move this a little over here like that. And we'll create another Arnold uh, shader for this object here, for this object that we have in our scene now. So go to our Hypershade once more. Down to our Arnold shaders, we'll go ahead and make yet another uh, standard shader. I'll rename it. and apply it. And we can start taking a look at some properties of your standard Arnold shaders. Let's go ahead and just render this out, take a look at it. Here's what the just very basic standard shader looks like without doing anything to it. More or less, it's actually identical to my, my ground plane texture here. Uh, you will notice that there's some nice stuff happening here. Uh, that you wouldn't be getting with your Maya software render. You can see a little bit of reflection of this ground uh, plane onto the Rubik's Cube here. Uh, you can see uh, some reflection happening here as well. Uh, in fact, we even have some reflection happening on the uh, side of the uh, teddy bear here. Uh, let's take a look at some of the different properties of these shaders. So obviously some very basic things that we can do to a shader is change the color of it. I'm going to change it to this green, render it out. Actually that shows off some of that reflection a little more nicely now than the white did. Uh, we can change some uh, properties such as the, met the metalness of our material. Notice that right now that's set to zero. What happens if we crank it all the way up to one and render it out? Actually, let's go ahead and save this image so we can compare it. Render it out. And you can see that that has a very different effect. And rem remember that the only thing that we changed with it was this metalness property. We cranked that up from zero to one here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep that image. We can compare it to the other one. Here it is without the metalness cranked up. Here it is with the metal property cranked up. Very nice reflections here. You can see how that really, what's, this is what's so powerful. One of the things that's so powerful about the Arnold render is that we don't have to fake this reflection in here. It actually calculates it based on the objects in your scene. But you will notice that the actual renders themselves will take longer than uh, typically with the Maya software render. So that's one of the downsides, but the upside is that you really get some very believable, convincing materials. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and crank that metalness back down. Uh, and I don't remember if I saved this image. I think I did. So I'll go ahead and render out. I've, I'm basically bringing it back to the state it was at before, before we actually adjusted the metalness. Uh, because I also wanted to show you the specular here, which right now is set to 1. 
Notice the specular qualities on this teddy bear. Let's go ahead and crank that weight down all the way to zero. Render that out. And what you'll notice is that we get something uh, more like a Lambert in our uh, Maya software renders. So, oops, I just rendered it again. I actually meant to keep the image, not render it again. But that's okay, we'll go ahead and keep that image. Uh, so you can see here it is with that uh, weight cranked up for the specular and here it is without that where it becomes more of a Lambert where it has no specular quality. So you can really fine tune these. Uh, there's a bunch of other properties to explore here. Uh, perhaps we'll try to explore some of those properties in a um, future video. Uh, but there is one more thing I want to show you that will really help get you up and started and running and, and working in the Arnold Render, and that is the presets, which we'll take a look at now. Now, I've been keeping my render view open. Obviously, uh, in my working view here, this has been changing as I've been making these updates. Uh, but let's go ahead and start taking a look at some of the presets, because this can be a very quick and and easy way to get uh, very far along with these materials in the Arnold uh, render. So I currently have the material for my teddy bear selected here in my attribute editor. And what I want to point out to you is that there are a bunch of presets here. And if we click on that, you'll see that you actually have a lot of these presets to uh, select from. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these different presets. So if I want to uh, swap out all my settings that I currently have in this material and, and select the balloon preset, for example, we can go ahead and replace it. Uh, if we look at the view in here, you'll see that it's been replaced. It's very hard to see what's actually going on here. But if we uh, click on our render button, you'll see that it will have applied the balloon preset. And this looks like it could be, for instance, a, um, a balloon figure. Let's go ahead and keep that. Oops, I just re-rendered it again. <laughs> Force of habit, I guess. Uh, let it do its thing. Keep that image. Try some more presets. So again, there's a ton to try out here. There's brushed metal. Let's go ahead and replace that. It's replaced it. You can't really tell in the working view there, but if we render it out, here is uh, this particular preset, which was the brushed metal preset. Uh, the brushed metal preset is gonna have that reflection, but you can see it's kind of blurred. It's not a really uh, sharp reflection. Uh, we could, of course, come in here and still adjust these materials that uh, we get with the preset. Maybe we don't want this kind of gray color. Maybe we want something that uh, has a little bit more of a, oh, let's say a blue tint to it. And if that's what we want, then that's exactly what we can do here. Take a look at some more presets. Again, a lot of fun, a lot of fun to look at these. Uh, we'll go with something very different now. Let's try glass. We'll go ahead and replace this material with glass. Can't really see it in here. Render it out. And you can see that you get an effect that you're just not gonna, going to be able to get in Maya software, at least not without faking it. Uh, very very interesting let's let's try moving this teddy bear uh, in front of the rubik's cube here maybe we'll just kind of swap out the position of these two objects here okay and we'll go ahead and render that out And there you go. You can see that this does a very nice effect, uh, giving the sense of something made out of glass. Anyway, I think that will just about do it for this video. 
Uh, that should be enough to get you uh, up and running using the Arnold Render. Uh, actually, before, before I finish off, uh, I'm going to just point out one other thing that we'll probably cover in more depth in a future video. Uh, but that's going to refer to the, uh, some of the Arnold render settings. We'll take a look at this in a future video, but I'm going to go ahead and go to the render settings and go to the Arnold render tab. And I just wanted you to notice that there are these samples here. Now, oftentimes what you're going to find when you do your renders in Arnold is that you're going to end up with some graininess happening in it. For instance, if I were to take this camera AA and I'm just going to bring it all the way down to oh, just one and re-render this, uh, you'll notice actually that we get some of that uh, graininess here. This is very common uh, and this is where I think it gets a little bit complicated, a little bit complicated working with the Arnold render. Uh, that is a simple matter of working with the sampling here. Uh, it gets a little complicated though because you can see that there's a number of different categories that we can uh, bring up, but it's not something that you just want to haphazardly um, adjust because higher numbers are going to result in longer render times. So uh, that's a little bit beyond uh, what we can actually cover in this video today. Uh, but perhaps we'll take a look at that in a future video. Anyway, I hope that that helps get you up and started running using the Arnold Render. And as always, uh, thank you for watching my video. I'll see you next time.